Hello friends and welcome back to uh, another video. In this video I'm going to rank the Ninjago season 1 uh, episodes. Then yeah, let's get started. At the bottom of our list we have uh, episode uh, 3, Snake Bed. Uh, this episode was so slow and boring. It, uh, the, for me at least, at the beginning of the episode we saw a montage of the ninja cleaning the bounty. Then in the end, end of Charge's parents came uh, to visit him. These characters for me are so annoying, and I really don't want to see uh, anything new for, of them. Uh, then uh, he visited them uh, and found them trans transformed into snakes. Then the ninja. Uh, Transform their uh, golden weapons into uh, vehicles. That was weird. I mean, uh, when the first Pinjitsu Master created uh, the golden weapons, uh, there was no technology or anything. This is so weird. But overall, the episode was so slow and very boring. With, uh, introduced uh, very uh, char bad characters, in my opinion. At 12th place, we have episode 1 Rise of the Snakes, the season premiere. This episode is one of my least favorite season premieres of Ninjago. The episode was so childish and uh, repetitive and slow also. Uh, we saw the ninja being lazy like they did in, in the premiere of season 11. But uh, but uh, if you ask me, I think uh, in season 11, in, th in this season it was a lot better because season 11 is the worst thing from Ninjago so far. Uh, but still not that good. The, at first when they go, go to the Jamanakai village, it was so weird how uh, a lot of villagers can do anything to a little kid. But when uh, he, but when Lloyd uh, realized the Hypno Brian came at, with them, uh, it makes sense. Overall this episode was uh, repetitive, uh, it, it was so weird, like the majority of season 1. Anyway. At 11th place we have episode 11, All of Nothing. Like, uh, the, again, another weird episode. The ninja spent uh, all the majority of the episode in a cage. And also, the prophesied green ninja, Lloyd, came uh, to help them. But uh, he's a stupid little kid, he couldn't do anything. Then, uh, Gamna came with the skeletons. What? The skeletons? Didn't he betray them in the pilot? Ah, that's so weird. Overall, this episode was so, was so bad, in my opinion, like all of the previous two episodes. At tenth place, we have episode two, Hell. This episode was sweet. It introduced the Falcon, which is one of the most iconic characters in Ninja, if if you if you even consider him as a character. It was actually f very fun. Uh, at uh, Ninjago. I hope he return one day. In this episode focus uh, on Zane, like uh, episode 3 Fox and J. We saw uh, Zane uh, discover uh, Lloyd's new plan. He created uh, a toy house or something like that with the help of the Hypnobri. Then uh, when they tried to stop him, the they went to the monastery and burned it. Uh, then, at the end of the episode, they discover they found the uh, Disney's bounty, which is a very cool ending. Overall, the episode wasn't terrible, it wasn't bad also, but has uh, some issues. At ninth place, we have episode 5, Can of Worms. This has one of the most uh, iconic things from season 1, which is Zane's Pingy. A lot of people like it, and for me, it was so hilarious. In this episode, uh, Kai and Jay went, uh, went to the Venomari tomb. Uh, they found uh, them released, like also the Venomari and the Constructor were released in this episode. Overall, this episode was uh, okay, I guess, and yeah. At 8th place, we have episode 8, uh, once, uh, no, uh, once beaten, twice shy. Uh, this is one of the true potential episodes, and it focuses on Jay and his true potential, and I found it to be by far the worst true potential episode. It focuses on uh, Z uh, on Jay and Nia relationship, which is uh, I, d I really don't care for. I don't care for any relationship in Ninja except uh, Wu, Wu and uh, Cold relationship and Zane and Pixels. Overall, uh, this episode was actually not very interested f because J Z Jay is my least favorite ninja. Also, uh, Nia is my second least favorite ninja. Also, in this episode, uh, all the ninja discovered that Nia is uh, samurai. Samurai X. Uh, this uh, episode, like I said, Jay uh, found his true potential. This scene was cool itself, but uh, yeah, overall the episode was not uh, for me. 
At the uh, 7th place you have episode 4, Never Trust Sneak. This episode has uh, one of my favorite scenes from all of Ninja, which is uh, Zen's vision about the Green Ninja. It was so awesome, I didn't expect something like that. Also in this episode the ninja were trying to find what is the best way to defeat your enemy. It was revealed that the best way to defeat your enemy is to make him your friends. Your friend? I mean it's very wise and I really like this. Also, this episode, uh, Lloyd and the Lloyd released uh, Pythor. They went uh, to the uh, to his old school to get revenge on the teachers and his old friends. But uh, the ninja captured him. And instead, and who, instead of uh, doing something bad to him, he uh, told him a story. Uh, uh, that's a terrible ending for me. But overall, the episode was so was cool, not so cool, nothing too awesome about it except for the first scene. At sixth place, we have episode six, the Snake King. Uh, my favorite part of this episode when the ninja was trying to rescue Lloyd, and they got. Uh, they fought uh, Samurai X for a while. In this episode, uh, we discovered the identity of Samurai X. For me, it wasn't that big of a twist because I knew that uh, Samurai X is near from uh, the beginning, and the the Samurai X thing didn't last for a lo- didn't the Samurai X identity didn't last for a long time. I mean, uh, it lasted only for two or three episodes, and we discovered who's the uh, Samurai X. Also. This episode was uh, the last episode from the first half. Overall, this episode was cool, nothing too bad about it, and nothing too awesome about it also. It's a cool episode. At fifth place, we have the season finale for uh, season one, which is uh, Day of the Great Devourer. In my opinion, the the finale wasn't as good as uh, the all the season. It's not as good as other uh, premieres. Uh, as uh, as other finals, I'm sorry. Uh, the finale, it was weird that Gromit is the one who saved the day in the end. Uh, it, it also was so dumb from the ninja to do that. I mean, how uh, they gave, gave him uh, the golden weapons? Uh, can they destroy the Great Devourer uh, together? It was so weird, so, so weird. I mean, season one is the weirdest season. Uh, also in the beginning of the episode, the ninja went to, uh, they did the tornado of creation and created uh, the sonic stealth raid or something like that, I forget how, what they called it. Overall the episode was so cool but nothing, uh, it felt a little weird and uh, with some uh, issues. At fourth place we have episode 10, the green ninja. This episode was has uh, one of the best plot twists in Ninjago, but for me it was a little a little predictable, which is the reveal of the prophesized uh, uh, green ninja. It was revealed that Lloyd is uh, the green ninja. For me it wasn't that big of a shocking, I mean, you kinda knew that Lloyd is the green ninja from the, five, f- from the green five on his uh, shirt. It was a really dumb idea. I mean, why? Why did he put the, this in his shirt? A lot of people who knew it from uh, that. Also, Lloyd had a little a big fox in the uh, the season, so you can know that he's uh, the Green Ninja. But I predicted that it is it could be Zane or Nia. Uh, Lloyd also was one of uh, my choices for the Green Ninja, but uh, not the biggest. Overall, also this uh, episode. Uh, Introduced uh, Kai's true potential, which is which we didn't see much of it, which is very sad, but at least we see it. Overall, this episode was pretty cool, but has a lot of it, some issues, not a lot. A third place we have calls only fo- Fox episode from this season, which is episode nine, the Royal Blacksmith. This ep- episode we were introduced to uh, Cole's father, and his, uh, and we knew that Cole is the. Cole's father is a dancer and stuff. Also in this episode, Cole found his true potential, which is, for me, the second best true potential scene. It was so great how Cole saved his father. But it's really sad that we didn't see anything from uh, Cole's true potential. I mean, we saw him uh, thinking over all of this stuff, but it's not weird for, for a guy uh, who has uh, super strength. Overall, this episode was cool. It has some issues with... with uh, Cole's true potential scene. It was a good scene, but uh, we didn't see anything from his true potential. But it, uh, but overall, the episode was uh, cool. At second place, we have episode twelve, uh, 
uh, Rise of the Great Devourer, which is the first part from season one finale. In this episode, uh, we were introduced to the to the Great Devourer. Also, in this episode, the uh, Pythor uh, disappeared uh, for a very long time until he was uh, revealed again in uh, season three. But in this episode was cool, actually. I really like it. I like uh, how the the train scene where the serpentine take over that train. Also, uh, the, the train was a very good thing, and, uh, and I hope uh, it has a cancelled set. I hope they release it in uh, Ninjago's 10th anniversary. It would be a cool move. Uh, also, I don't have much to say about this episode because it did uh, something, but uh, it was really fun to watch. Anyway. And at first place, of course, by far, my favorite episode from season 1 is episode 7, TikTok. It has my favorite scene from uh, season 1, which is Zane's backstory. Also, my second favorite scene from season 1, which is Zane's true potential. It introduces us to the true potential concept and how it works. But it, it has only one issue, because Zane's true potential was so, so awesome. And we thought that the other, uh, all of the other true potential would be as good as Zane's, but no. Some of them were cool, good, uh, some of them were cool, some of them were trash. The Jay's was actually okay for me. It, it's probably even bad one. Kai's and Cole's were disappointing. They are not so awesome, I mean. But Zane's was amazing. Also, his backstory is my second favorite Ninja Go Ninja backstory. It was so cool and very sad. I mean, not very, very sad, but it was sad enough. And I really like how uh, they showed it to us. Overall, this episode start, uh, was the real start for Ninjago uh, being awesome. And it's one of the most iconic episodes and one of the best. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Please like and subscribe, share it with your friends and see you next time.